welcome to this week's episode of the MBS Show. I'm Daniel Anthony, your host. Joining me today is Norman Sanzo. Hello. I see you've gotten rid of the Russian accent. It's not Halloween anymore, so Russian accent is not needed. All right. So this week, also joining us is Rebecca Starborn. Hey, everybody. So Rebecca, how are you? I am fantastic. How are you guys? We're great. I'm good. I'm good. Right, so Rebecca, before we get started with the show, we will need you to unlock the first part by answering four very important questions. Let's do it. So, so the first question on the list is, who is your favorite pony? So despite being extremely competitive and currently rocking rainbow hair, I'm going to go with Derpy. Derpy? So why Derpy against Rainbow Dash? You know, I, I think there's a little derp in all of us. Um... For example, the first time I met Forest Rain face to face in person, I was I was in Derpy cosplay, and I was like, "Oh, hey, I'm Starborn. Nice to meet you." I locked my keys in my car. <laughs> <laughs> I am guilty of that as well. <laughs> okay, wow, that's an interesting first um, impression. Yeah. Well, you so know. did he help you get it out? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, him and um, the uh, the ever uh, not ever free um, Philadelphia radio uh, team. I think um, I think DJ Nexus was the one that actually got the idea to uh, put a stick down my window and unlock the door. He has experience. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've had that happen so many times, and I had someone jack my car every time I did it. Oh wow! So let's move on to the next part of the questions. Which is your favorite episode? Um, the, the last roundup, because derpy. Oh, cool. <laughs> I mean, logical no, no, answer. Actually, sorry? Logical answer. Yeah, definitely. But um, because of that, just let me sidetrack a little bit. How did you react to Derpy Gate? I think that actually happened right after I had become a brony. You know, obviously, I immediately took Derpy's side. I was like, hey, you know, you can't. That's It's not right to, like, censor something. I, I really don't know how to put it. But, you know, like. I just thought it was it was terrible that people were trying to get rid of her, um, you know, just because of very, very few people were like, hey, this is offensive. But I, I know a lot of bronies don't like to talk about the derpy gate issue because it's, it's very, it's very touching and sad. So we shouldn't, we should, this should be a happy show. Yeah, it's true, true. I mean, there's a lot of people and their opinions and they could be haters. That's why... <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, because this is the first time we ever had a guest who actually says Derpy's a favorite character, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Uh, I think so, yeah. This would be the first. Yep. Winner. So I never got a chance to ask that question. <laughs> 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 All right, so the third question would be, how did you become a brony? You know, I thought you guys might actually make me admit this. Yeah, so uh, 4chan. Oh, okay. 4chan was my gateway to ponies. And, you know, like, I, I kind of started as, like, um, a doubter. Like, everybody on 4chan was posting these little pastel pony pictures. And I'm like, what? What is the all? They're all very cute characters, but why? Just why? Um, and, you know, like, the more that I, I saw them, I was like, no, I like the rainbow one. The rainbow one's my favorite. And I didn't know any of the ponies' names or anything, and... Uh, finally, like one day, I just I gave in. I was like, "All right, you know what? Let's do it. Let's watch episodes." And and I watched I think like the first two episodes, and then I heard uh, some of Sim Gratina's music, and I uh, I saw the uh, Brony Dance Party's Rainbow Factory PMV. So I kind of fell in love with the show and the fandom, like all in the span of a week. <laughs> That's <laughs> one hell of a jump start. <laughs> It's like zero to zero, you just began with uh, just, you know, that obnoxious doubt that people on 4chan are just being obnoxious, and then bang. Yeah, well, I, you know, that's what 4chan does. <laughs> I'm not really scared of 4chan. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I grew up with 4chan. I've been, I've been a 4chaner since I was, I don't, I don't know, like 15, 16. Oh. I'm 24 now, so they're like a, they're like a family to me. Wow. A very big, dysfunctional, hate-everything family. <laughs> oh, sounds like a normal family to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the last question, since you mentioned family, but we want to talk about your real family and how your friends and your family react to you being a brony. Um, uh, so, basically, when I became a brony, um, I had just moved from Texas to Washington, D.C. 
I had just gotten out of the Air Force. I needed a job, and I got picked up here. So I moved out, and um, at, at the time that I, like, became a brony, I really only had, like, two friends out here. And um, so, of course, I immediately, you know, sat down, both of them, and was like, hey, you guys have to watch this show. It's awesome. <laughs> and, of course, like, I think maybe two or three weeks after that, I had them cosplaying with me. So... It two to three weeks time span. Yep. <laughs> you work fast. Why is everybody working faster than me when it comes to brony conversion or evangelism? You know, it's like everyone can do it so fast. I'm just a, I, I'm a very eccentric person, uh, just in general. So it's like hop on the hype train and go all out immediately. <laughs> um, also, I was a really big cosplayer to begin with. Yeah, that's just like the first place that I took it. I'm like, oh, Rainbow Dash costume. Let's go. Ah, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, so, so you know, immediately, like, my two friends, um, you know, I got them in cosplay. And the first, the very, very first time we went out in cosplay, um, we were we were walking down the street at the um, Cherry Blossom Festival, and we heard a group singing Winter Wrap-Up. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> so we walked over to them, and we met, like, basically, you know, every known brony in Washington, D.C., uh, so of course you know we we bonded over ponies and everything else and um, so yeah yeah I went from like two friends to a hundred and two friends <laughs> thanks to this fandom mm. um, and and they're still um, pretty much my only friends in the area and so everybody that I am friends with right now is is a brony basically. Ooh, I wonder if you um, have been featured on EQD. Need to look that one up. The, the DC bronies. Yeah, the meetup. Uh, actually, we've, we've had, um, quite a few of our meetups featured on EQD, um, because we're such a large group. We, uh, average for us is, like, anywhere from 70 to 100 people per meetup. What? <laughs> 70 to 100? You're having a mini convention at every meetup. <laughs> yeah, basically, um, and, and so much so that, um, one of our members, Fire Envy, decided to, um, to actually make... A convention, um, and I'm the co-chair for that. It's um, it's called Cloudsdale Congress, uh, and our first um, our first con is going to be next March. Oh. Cloudsdale Congress in March. Wow. Is this a small convention? Dude, if seventy to hundred attend each meetup, I don't think it's <laughs> going to be very small. Hey, for con um, level, I, it's I, small. I mean, we plan on having uh, somewhere between like five hundred to a thousand people. So I mean, like not huge, but not tiny. It's a medium-sized convention then. All right, understandable. Yeah. So, uh, aside from your friends, how about your family? Um, you know, like, I've, I've told them, but they just, like, don't care. They're like, oh, ponies? Okay. And to them, it's, it's, it's nothing different than, like, you know, a new Pokemon or something like that. Uh, then again, I also, like, I have the advantage of being a girl, so it's a little less Weird. Shocking. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, I don't... Being a brony, I, I can't say weird, but I know that some parents have issues with it. That's, My parents are attacking me not because of the gender issue, but because of the age issue. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, that's also mm. a good point, I guess. Parents are weird in their own way. <laughs> but it's not only that. It's like, today I was at a friend's house, and he walked into the room. His brother walked into the room in, uh, when I was using my computer. He saw my Pinkie Pie wallpaper. And he's from the same university as our friend uh, Vincent Fang, who's Doggy999 on DeviantArt, who's previous guest. And there's also Bamboo Pony is also there. And what happened is he's like, e, you watch that stuff? That's damn childish. I'm like, yeah, you know this thing? He's like, yeah, there's like a bunch of idiots in my university who watch it. <laughs> he's like, there's no peace in the student lounge. Everybody's watching ponies. I'm like, it's about time you join them. Yeah, basically. Alright, so, now that we've done with these four questions, Achievement Unlocked, you are able to continue with the show. Fantastic. Okay, so, let's go to housekeeping. Norman, tell us about the updates on the Studley Stallion stash-off. Okay, well, last week we mentioned that we were entering the Studley Stallion stash-off. I did it right this time. Well, uh, what is it all about? Well, um, it's a fundraiser in conjunction with the Movember Foundation. Uh, The basic rule of this event is... Participants are required to grow a mustache from scratch throughout the month of November. So if you would like to support us, please donate to our pages. Um, All of the link will be provided in the show notes and all of the funds will be sent to Movember Foundation. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, we're gonna see who has the bigger mustache at the end of the month. Indeed. Oh, I'm definitely gonna beat you both. Oh yeah. <laughs> How do? <laughs> Halloween costume. Sheer willpower. Very very soon. Oh, sheer willpower. That reminded me of one SpongeBob skit. <laughs> And there's going to be a huge Halloween costume blowout sale anytime now. <laughs> yeah, there should be, actually. Well, I think that's about it for housekeeping. Yep, so let's move to the news. And in today's news, Game Loft calls upon the great and powerful Trixie to promote the long-awaited game. So there's a link in the show notes. With Season 3 around the corner, what more can we ask for? We have comics, we have Season 3, and now what about a video <laughs> game? The people from Game Loft have been working on a My Little Pony mobile game, and they have asked the great and powerful Trixie of all ponies, to help promote the game. And the game is built about building your own version of Ponyville where you can add ponies to the town. Links can be found in the show notes. So, guys, are you all excited about this? I'm sure I am. I, you know, I, I'm pretty excited about it, but, I, I, you know, I'm just going to give a tiny little shout-out to my guys at Main 6 and say I'm a lot more excited for fighting his magic. Yeah, it's true. Oh, yeah. I, I love that game. I love that game. I'm, I'm like, keeping one of these guys who I've known for a long time who is, like, into every single fighting game he plays, and I'm going to be slipping him this in his pen drive one day. I'm like, hey, try this out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, back to Game Loft's game. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, it's almost, like, Farmville or whatnot, but it's free, and since every brony's going to play it, why not? Yep. <laughs> and I, from the trailer, I can think the 3D representation of the ponies is the best thing next to Gary's mod. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Because it's so hard to put these ponies into 3D. Yeah, Game Love has a lot of crews working on it and the game is free, so why not try it out? I mean, you're not going to pay anything for it unless you're those kind of... It does run on a premium, uh, what do you call it, structure where if you want to go straight to the top, then yeah, you pay to unlock all the buildings, all the ponies and stuff like that. But you can choose to build it out slowly. Yeah, you're not forced to do it. Not but, like Monopoly hotels where you have to pay for Sugar Cube Corner. Oh, god dang that Monopoly hotel game. That's not fun. <laughs> I mean, I was a I was a religious Monopoly hotels player until ponies came about. Oh. Because I'm like, I want Sugar Cube Corner so badly and I have to pay for it. Like, no, I'm not going to play this anymore. <laughs> Monopoly hotel is so hard with the whole system. It's not even worth it. I like, bought like, I don't know how many hotels already, but... Uh, Oh, well, at least Game Loss will give us hope. I hope. So, next up, Norman, why don't you take this one? Alright, give me a second. Pre-order the My Little Pony comic on iTunes. Um, do you own an iDevice? Well, if the answer is no, tough luck. Because iTunes has started pre-orders on the digital version of the comic. The comic goes for three ninety nine and has 33 pages. And you can expect to read the comic on November 28, 2012. One thing to be noted, pre-orders are only available in America and Canada iTunes Store. Link can be found in the show notes. So, wow. iTunes is doing pre-orders for comic books now? That's awesome. Yep, and uh, just a short spoiler warning. We have viewed the first few pages of this comic in the iTunes Store. You can view the first three pages if you are in the States and you have iTunes. Just go over to the iBook section. You can view the first three pages of this comic book. You will not regret it. True, true. I want to buy it, but I can't since I'm not in America or Canada. The first comic is going to be called The Return of Quid Chrysalis. So, yep, get ready for a totally mind-blowing comic. I want it so bad. Derpy's on page three. <laughs> but honestly speaking, um, only on iTunes? Is it out on any Android devices yet? Uh, how do you say... Google Play books are not available in Malaysia, so I wouldn't know. But you do have a Google Play account, right? Yeah, but books not available to books. I have only Google Play for music and apps. Oh, okay. America gets everything first. Obviously. Ponies as well. (laughs) (laughs) Why doesn't the hub come here? So, Rebecca, how about you taking the last one for the week? Oh, fantastic. (laughs) So, the Vinyl Derpy and Rainbow Dash uh, from Hot Topic are back in stock. Link is posted in the uh, MBS show episode 36 notes. <laughs> so, were you one of the many few that didn't get a chance to purchase the vinyl Derpy and Rainbow Dash figures from Hot Topic? I, uh, I gotta say myself, but uh, totally not. But if you are, then good news for you. The vinyl figures are back in stock, and you can get them online from the Hot Topic website. 
the figures will cost you about fourteen fifty each, and you better get them fast before they're sold out again. Oh boy. Uh, the first time they sold out, it was interesting. And the last time I checked, they were kind of sold out. They were on, I think, pre-order, something like that. Yeah. I have a feeling these ponies are going to be like on some sort of record breaker for the year for the most sold, most produced toy of some sort. Because these things are selling out faster than, I don't know, iPhones, I could say. <laughs> could well, be. I mean, considering Bronies bought out the entire first, like, printed set of the cards from Interplay, I can't say that I'm surprised that the Derby's selling out at all. I mean, considering, you know, Derby and Rainbow Dash are best ponies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, update, update on the Hot Topic store. Uh, with every purchase of $25 or more, you'll get a free gift. So do it fast That's because... Right. They do have that promotion going on. Yeah, do it fast before, well, you don't get any free gift. And to all our Malaysian <laughs> listeners, yes, they do ship to Malaysia. How much does shipping cost, Norman? Um, I got no idea. It's rather pricey. Thanks for putting me on the spot, jerk. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, you already ordered one. So, like, you should know how much they cost. Yeah, I do know the base price, but I don't remember the shipping price. Give me a second. So, Norman, how much does the shipping cost? Well, after opening my email, the shipping and handling cost to Malaysia is $26.31. That's US dollars, right? Yep. Okay, wow. Well, it's cheaper than We Love Fine, so yeah. Yeah, but We Love Fine is shirts that you can wear. These pony things, they're just going to be on the computer desk. Hot Topic has some pony shirts as well, right? Yeah, uh, funny yes, enough, the prices yes, the prices for the pony shirt that I noticed are a bit cheaper than We Love Fine. So actually, a lot of the um, Hot Topic shirts are um, are provided to Hot Topic from Mighty Fine, which, oh. uh, if I'm not mistaken, is a subsidiary of We Love Fine. Yeah, it's the same so, person. Uh, so I noticed the same art. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, that wraps up the news for the week. So, now let's move on to MLP Facts for the week. All these facts that you're going to hear can be found on the MLP Facts Twitter account. Link is in the show notes. So, the first fact for the week. Did you know that cantalot is a pun on camelot? And a canter is one of the many ways in which a horse can walk. Wow, I did not know that. This is actually the first thing that I saw as soon as I entered the fandom, to be honest. (laughs) (laughs) Because when I looked at cantalot, I thought, no, that's a typo. (laughs) Anyway, it's not. (laughs) No, but it says the show is like puns, puns everywhere. And I mean, yeah. if you enter Canterlot into, if I'm not mistaken, an Apple device, it will automatically space out Canter and Lot, so you know that two words. Really? <laughs> let, let, let me do that now. Let me do that now. Give me a second, because I don't I believe you. I on an you. iPad once, and it's can, then I have what is called the automatic speaker to tell you in case autocorrect wants to sabotage your life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It does do that. That sucks. Yeah, so basically, I I knew what Cantor was because uh, I did read up a bit on equine terminology and then Cantor a lot. That's bloody genius. <laughs> I think when I type Cantor a lot into my Android, it corrects it to Camelot uh, until I finally just was like, hey, Cantor a lot is a thing now. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the next fact for the week. Luna is actually Spanish for moon. Ah, huh, that's interesting. Hmm. I, I thought it was Latin, actually. I feel bad that I studied Spanish for three years and didn't remember that, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was supposed to be in Spanish class, but it got full, so I'm doing Mandarin. Hmm, that's cool. <laughs> and did you know Twilight's Cutie Mark in total has 42 points? That's interesting. 42 vertices. 42 is a very powerful number. Indeed. The answer to life, the universe, and everything. And it's also the answer to friendship. And it's also her number in the running of the leaves. 42, um, that's actually another reference to um, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Huh. Very good book and movie. Is that where the answer to the life and answer the life to the universe and everything came from? Yes, it is. Oh, all right. Wow. I'm learning something. And the last fact for the week is Derpy's first spoken line was not, I just don't know what went wrong. It was, in fact, in season one and episode four, which is mm, muffins. Well, but you all thought I was going to go mm, bananas or something like that, right? Uh, I got no idea. But hey, uh, muffins. Well, I, I listened to it, but it was uh, kind of yes and then kind of a no kind of deal. Because yeah. 
she kind of said it, but it was in a huge group, so... It was a passing thing. Yeah. But I used this as, like, one of my warfares against someone who was playing a character in a, her school play. And she's like, I only have four lines, Daniel. I'm not going to look good on the stage. And I'm like, look here. This is a picture of Derpy Hooks. She had only one line in season one, and she's one of the most popular characters of the show. What's your excuse? <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Yeah, that motivated her a bit. Yay. And in today's guest time, we have an awesome guest. Her name is Rebecca Starborn. She was the Derpy Hoos from BronyCon and Cantalot Gardens. So, Rebecca, tell us a bit more about yourself. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a closet Brony musician. Um, I do all kinds of art. And, um, yeah, I, I had a great idea when I was designing my, um, well, one of my costumes for BronyCon. Um, I actually ended up wearing, I think, four different costumes throughout the convention. But I was like, well, what can I do for Derpy, since she is my favorite pony? Uh, So I sat down, and I bought um, stacks of of envelopes and a bunch of little index cards. And um, I I just wrote little derpisms on each and every one. Uh, So they all said more or less different things. Um, you know, granted, there were probably like two or three repeats in there because it was hard to come up with 200 different things that Derby would maybe say. <laughs> um, so I got them all sealed up and put my little uh, heart on the back of each and every one and started handing them out at BronyCon. And I definitely never expected them to kind of turn into a big thing like they did. Um, I... Really, I gave them out, you know, just hoping to kind of, like, make somebody smile or something. And I definitely got that back, like, a hundredfold. But I thought that, you know, they all said just the same line, that it's great to be different. Like, what else did you No, say? absolutely not. <laughs> um, uh, they, they said all kinds of stuff. Oh, God, you would ask me this. Um, I think I had, um, I know I had ones that said, like, I just don't know what went wrong. <laughs> um, but oh, I, I, I had it... Um, translated into probably like five or six different languages so there was you know there were ones in like spanish and japanese and and um german and russian and all kinds of fun stuff i remember you know since i love the rainbow factory fanfic so much i posted one that said um i love your eyes (laughs) no i posted one that said um like, I, I got sent to the Rainbow Factory, but they didn't want me. <laughs> oh. Something like that. Um, I had one that was like, hey, look, I drew a picture of you, and it was a stick figure pony. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, like, probably one of the best pieces of art I've ever drawn. Oh, um, derpy, you're so random. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, they really were just um, completely um, sporadic. Um you know, there, there were ones that said, like, you are amazing, or it's great to be different, or I love you. I had some that said, like, sing without a reason, or go fall in love. And, you know, it was uh, just pure chance that Forest Rain got the it's great to be different one that, um, that well, the song Great to be Different is based on. Wow. So, Rebecca, we have some questions for you this week. Absolutely. So, Norman, would you like to go first? Oh, sure, why not? So, Rebecca, um, how did you come up with the idea to dress up as Derpy Hooves? Because she's best pony. Wow, that's mind-blowing. Best blown. ever. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, um, when we say dress up, you did dress up from head to toe in a Derpy full suit costume, right? No, the full suit Derpy was not me. Oh. Um, uh, so, my, my costume just consisted of a, a grey t-shirt, with wings, um, some shorts, uh, brown um, Equestria Postal Service bag that I made to carry all my letters. You have a yeah. picture? And then, like, uh, actually, I do. Um, I can post a link of that so you can have it somewhere. <laughs> Yay! We'll fix it in post. Yep. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I've got I've got a picture of um, of my Derpy Hoops cosplays from both. Um, Canterlot Gardens and from BronyCon, because uh, my costume changed rather significantly between the two. Oh, okay, okay. Um, oh, like how? So, um, what was um, the reaction of the people at the convention when they saw you? Um, you know, for the most part at the convention, I just got like a lot of um, 
smiles and thank yous um, and a lot of people um, wanting the letters, you know, just as, as whatever. A, a lot of people actually thought that it was just a prop and it wasn't, like, openable. <laughs> so, oh. you know, I had to, like, egg people on. I'm like, hey, you can open it. There's something inside for you to read. <laughs> Okay, man. that's interesting. Well, next time if somebody meets you, they'll open your letter. You can write open me on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, at Cantor Like Gardens, I actually took it up a notch. Um, at Cantor Like Gardens, in addition to giving out letters, um, I gave out um, like handmade shirts uh, that had different sayings on them. Uh, and I gave out um, a bunch of like packages, um, actually. Like, I, I got these little brown boxes and beat them up a little bit to make them look like uh, they were actually, you know, carried around by Derpy. Um, I tied them up in, in brown string and attached a letter to each one, and I handed them out, and they all had uh, My Little Pony merch inside. Wow, that's amazing. That's got to cost you a lot. Uh, not, not too much, really. And I, you know, like, the hugs and smiles that you get from doing something like that is always worth it. I'm not sure if Derpy Hoof's or Santa Claus. (laughs) Derpy Hoof is Santa Claus. Derpy is Santa Claus. (laughs) So, um, was it easy to pack your costume? Oh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they, they're all pretty simple. I mean, it's, um, aside from the wings, it's just like folding clothes. Um, yeah, because I've seen wings and they can be a hassle to bring around. Yeah. Um. Well, no, so I made my wings myself, and they're um, they're just like a like a slightly reinforced foam, so Ooh. they're not super duper fragile or anything. If oh. they get bent, I can just bend them back. How it's did you like make a, them? Um, they're uh, made out of like foam paper and uh, what do you call those things? Like pipe cleaners uh, for the reinforcement of them. Oh. And um, yeah, so, so I just double layer the foam and put the pipe cleaners in between them and um, yeah, glued it together. Um, so I can assume that you make the costume yourself? Yes. Oh. Yes. Um, I, I drew the cutie mark on there, um, the wings I made. And then uh, I have a Pinkie Pie Cupcakes cosplay, and um, the, the whole coat for that is hoof-stitched and um, hoof-painted. Ooh, my. Because uh, I did a cosplay last year as Surprise from G1. Uh-huh. And I bought the, the pair of wings I bought was the you know, pre-made angel wings made out of feathers, and that was really bulky. <laughs> because it was made out of metal, and there was a bit, I don't know, they didn't maintain it properly, it was a bit sticking out. And because um, of how crowded it was, it was hard to move around because you have to squeeze through doors. And Yeah. Yeah, I, I, need, to, I need to learn this full method. <laughs> For me, um, I mean, like, it wasn't, it, it's not too hard because the wings don't really stick out very far past my shoulders, so they're pretty easy to navigate with. Mm, okay, okay. So, um, do you have any tips for people um, if they want to do any cosplay? You know, just make it yours, basically. Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, store-bought stuff. It it might look a little better sometimes, but um, a lot of of people in, like, the anime fandom, and I think the brony fandom, too, really appreciate looking at something that somebody put a lot of work into. So, you know, something that you made yourself, and it, it definitely makes you feel a lot more proud to wear your costume. Oh, awesome, awesome. Definitely, I have I felt that before. So, Daniel, you got anything? Yes. So, your letters have certainly come a very, very long way into, you know, uh, bringing out a big message about being different. I mean, that's when I assume that all the letters contain it's great to be different. But uh, where did the inspiration first start for, you know, to go out and, you know, give out these letters? Because there could have been 101 things our friend... One of our co-hosts, Tasha, she dressed up as Pinkie Pie. She gave out free candy. But what inspired you to go for letters? Uh, uh, because, you know, it's it's Derby's trademark in Fanon, at least. Um, so, uh, you know, I just, uh, it just kind of popped into my head um, maybe just a few weeks before BronyCon. I was like, well, you know, I could, I could write letters. And then I, I don't like to make anything too generic because had I written 200 letters that all said the same thing, they wouldn't be as special, you know. Like if, if you're if you're standing next to somebody and I gave you both a letter and you opened it up and it said the same thing, you know, it, it's I don't feel like it's um, as nice when when you got both letters, uh, you know, and you open them and you can like read them to each other and laugh about it or 
or feel good about it or whatever. Um, I did I did end them all the same way. Every single letter ends with love derpy. Um, save save a very very few that I think were written in Spanish and said el derp. <laughs> Something like that. So did you actually give them out or did you just drop them on the floor where people could find them? Uh, both actually. Um, there were a lot that I handed to people. Um, there were there were a lot that like I didn't like make sure people got them, but like um, you know, say I was on the second floor somewhere and I saw people downstairs, I would just throw a handful of them and say, "Hey, I brought you a letter." <laughs> In the derby voice, uh, as close as I can get. Okay, cool. So you have a, now a new campaign on your YouTube about doing a random act of kindness, as in like bringing the bringing the spirit of uh, what you just did to the streets and out of just the brony fandom. So. Any particular motivation for this? I, I mean, uh, aside from the fact that I, I want people to take what I do and pay it forward, um, no, not really. Um, I just, I thought it, it felt like a really good idea, and um, I, I would really like to see what the Brony fandom can do with it. So, uh, would I you know. like to share a bit more about this? I, I, I mean, you, you essentially hit it. Um, it's just the YouTube video. Um, I've got a special project planned for, uh, hopefully the end of November, um, for anybody who submits to the project. Um, it definitely needs a better name. <laughs> uh, the title of the video right now is Brony Sharing Kindness. And, uh, of course the first line is the, in the description is, Hey, show me a random act of kindness and give me a better title for this video. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, but, uh, essentially, that's that's all it is, is um, just go out and do something nice for a stranger. So, uh, next, I'm going to ask you a bit more about, you know, your custom pony project that you're running since we saw your DeviantArt earlier. <laughs> so, when did you start on this, making custom ponies? Uh, making custom ponies, uh, I guess um, right before BronyCon. I think at the time BronyCon rolled around, um, I'd made about four of them. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe, may, uh, no, no. I guess I gave. I had a few more um, because I gave out. Um, I gave Mike the microphone. A Mike the microphone custom, and same thing for the, uh, the living tombstone. Oh, and then at the time, I had mentioned that on our show. I think so. He mentioned something about someone giving him a custom of his own character. Oh well, yeah, that was probably me. <laughs> wow. Wow, that was what twenty plus episodes ago. I mean, yeah, ten episodes ago. Wow. <laughs> Well, that's cool. I'm, I'm glad he talked about it. Mike, the microphone even uh, tracked me down on Skype and, and was like, hey, thanks. I just wanted to give you like a proper thank you for your custom. Um, so that was really cute. Oh, cool. And I also noticed that you did one for all level at once. Yes. Um, I know he's seen the pictures of it and he thought it was really cool. Um, unfortunately, since all levels doesn't really go to conventions... I haven't had a chance to actually give it to him, so it's, it's sitting on my shelf with the rest of the musician ponies. Wow. Oh. So you have a shelf full of musician ponies? Yes. <laughs> oh, I wonder who who's who's on the shelf. Uh, it's um, Final Scratch, Octavia, All Levels at Once, Tombstone, Mike. Um, actually, I haven't made a glaze yet, or wooden toaster, but I intend to. And right now, in his place, there's a carrot top. <laughs> There's an inside joke somewhere on that. Uh, no, probably not. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I just I fell in love with Carrot Top based on um, Beyond Her Garden slash Beyond Her Tomb. So um, instead of painting glaze, I painted a carrot top because back when I was uh, making her, there was the the Golden Harvest uh, blind bag hadn't come out yet, and I didn't even know about it. Oh, okay. So that's about it for my questions. How many? Oh, really? No. Okay, so Rebecca, I see that you do modeling. How has that been like? Um, it's been it's been pretty okay. Um, it's it's a lot harder work than I expected it to be. Um, when I first got into modeling, I I guess I was kind of jaded about how it worked. <laughs> but yeah, I, I've met some pretty cool um, photographers. Uh, I've met some pretty crappy photographers, <laughs> and I just that's just kind of how the business goes. But yeah, I, I mean, I was I was super surprised that everything turned out as well as it did. Oh, okay. Have you have you done any photo shoots in your derpy costume? Uh, I have I have asked a few photographers about doing like My Little Pony based photo shoots, and I have interested people now. 
um, where I didn't before. So uh, it has not happened yet, but you can expect it in the future. Oh, okay, cool. From what I seen of your modeling, you do steampunk, if I remember right. Is that right? Yes. Um, I, when I first started modeling, um, they were like, "Well, you know, like you, you don't really look incredibly traditional, but you would you would make for like a great like alternative arts model." Um, and and before I was a brony, I was really big into the steampunk fandom. Oh, okay. So um, I just kind of continued in that direction so far. Oh, okay. Well, there have been a lot of steampunk bronies out there. The, uh, yeah, I have seen quite a bit of that kind of art. Um, do you have the one of fine steampunk bag? The one that they uh, the shirts? Yes, I do. I have I have both the bag and the steampunk shirt. Ooh. So, um, call me um, silly, but what is steampunk all about? Uh, steampunk is kind of like an alternative history, like Victorian era, where, like where I guess instead of like electricity being mainstream everything is sort of steam powered and clockwork mechanical type um stuff <laughs> oh okay um, so everything is so steam powered all yeah. valves and pipes running around kind of thing right um and then like uh instead of uh modern day aircraft everything is done by airship or hot air balloon um and uh like i just i found i found steampunk to be like particularly beautiful in its own right mm, okay because like I, I personally don't see um, why steampunk is popular, but I'm an ignorant Asian who don't know anything much. <laughs> I got to know about it a little, but then when I saw the bag that arrived with my friend's Wheel of Fine Order, I was like, hey, this is pretty damn cool. I gotta check this out. And then I looked into steampunk art because uh, how much... I'm not so sure about this, but how much steampunk brony art is there? You know, that, that I don't think that's like something you can quantify... Um, you know, that's like, you know, how many pictures of Carrot Top are out there in the world? <laughs> I mean, like, is it significant? I, I mean, I'm pretty sure it would be. Um, I've seen some, you know, and, and let's be honest, most of it I've seen is Rainbow Dash. Because um, she just, she makes a really good steampunk pony and uh, she plays into the um, the love of aviation that seems to kind of integrate really well into steampunk. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's definitely a lot. And um it can get kind of blurry, like, when dealing with things like um, Blackjack from Fallout Equestria. Like, whereas, you know, if that's some kind of, like, robotics or if it's some kind of steampunk, in certain cases, it could fall either direction. Oh, okay. okay. That's interesting. We didn't talk much about steampunk with our previous guest before because they didn't mention any. So this is the first time I'm listening to somebody talk about steampunk. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we had probably maybe a couple of people who were interested in it, but no one with, like, a direct vested interest who was completely brony out there. True, true, true. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm definitely no, like, expert on the subject of steampunk. Um, it, it was just, it, it was a hobby, and it got really fun. And uh, unfortunately, once I became a brony, like, my involvement in the steampunk community kind of fettered off. Um, oh. You know, because ponies. <laughs> is it based off a particular show or anything? No, steampunk uh, is actually kind of been around for a really long time. There, uh, I think, um, like Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea was moderately uh, steampunk influenced, or not steampunk influenced, but really influencing on uh, steampunk um, oh. and and just all kinds of, of older literature like that. that Unfortunately, I haven't read most of it. Okay, um, no problem. So, um, have you considered doing a steampunk slash pony cosplay? I have uh, considered it, but it, it's just never made it into the works. Um, most, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, like most of the work I have put into my costumes lately has gone to actually writing the derpy letters. <laughs> um, because I, I try and step it up. Um, like I said, um, for Candlelight Gardens, I added um, I added the shirts and I added the packages. Um, but in addition to that, um, I had, I think, um, like 380 letters for Canterlot versus wow. 200 that I had for BronyCon. Well, at least the letters that you gave out did a difference. Yeah, they paid off. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's always fun. 
Um, and, and then, um, also, uh, it was nice because people who actually recognized me at, at Canterlot, um, had something for me to autograph when they asked for it. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. So I, I didn't, I don't remember Daniel asking this, but, um, when Forrest Rain got your letter and did a song about it, were you surprised? Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I, I I came home one day to um, a message on my Skype that was just like, hey, Rebecca, you have to watch this. And I was like, okay. And it was Forest Rain's, like, 4,000 subscriber special. And I'm like, okay, let's let's see what this guy's got. And, he, you know, he starts telling the story. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. I know and the I think feeling. Before, before the song was over, I think I'd called, like, three of my best friends, like, oh my god, somebody wrote a song about the thing that I did and the thing, oh my god. Uh, I can imagine. And personally, when I listened to his message, it brought me to tears. Well, almost. It was yeah, so heart-touching. It took, it, took, was... it took a while to get to me because for some reason, I, I don't know why sometimes it takes a while for these things to hit me. I, I was just thinking, you know, like, this can't be real. This can't, this can't be a thing. And then when I actually had, like, the opportunity to... Um, to sing Great To Be Different on stage at Canterlot Gardens, like, that was amazing. Uh, and that was kind of the point where it hit me and was like, no, this is this is serious. I, I was at least partially behind something incredibly amazing. And then, of course, you know, like, we're halfway through the song and three-quarters of the audience at Canterlot Garden is, is just crying their eyes out. <laughs> oh, yeah. man, that's so awesome. I know how you guys feel. Oh, that's so awesome. really forward happening right before your eyes. Yeah. It was such a beautiful song to add to that too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, like, I don't think I could ever thank Forest Rain enough for, like, taking my words and, and spreading them to an audience, which otherwise I could have, like, never reached on my own. And the message that you wrote down was random and it was completely by luck that he got that message. Uh, so the It's Great to Be Different wasn't incredibly... Um, I mean, it wasn't totally random um, in in the sense uh, of me writing it. Um, it. It's kind of based on my own life. Um, I, I've kind of always liked just being able to be who I want to be. Um, like for me, there was no, there's no closet. I've never had to come out and say anything. Um, it's it's kind of like I I just put everything out there in the open, and if you really want to judge me for it that's fine but i'm i'm gonna do what i want to do like becoming a brony there was never any uh any any closet brony time it was like oh hey i'm a brony and then a week later i had blind bags on my desk at work wow that's awesome i mean can you imagine what would happen if forest rain found the i just don't know what went wrong letter (laughs) (laughs) i uh, that will be an interesting song. Now no, that I think about it, that will be interesting. Uh, it was it's funny how it's a really catchy pop song. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it'd just be another uh, Hey There, Mr. Derpy. Oh, that's a good song too. Yeah. But the Great To Be Different, that's a powerful song. I think yeah. you got him right there because he's a Derpy fan as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he's, he's very much a Derpy fan. I mean, if I, found, if I found something that, you know, maybe a Pinkie Pie might have wrote, like, a smile letter, and especially when I'm sad, it would probably make my heart explode as well. <laughs> that can be good. Because I'm totally... I'm, I'm a total Pinkie Pie fan, as I just said earlier. All right. Well, those are my questions. Just one last question for you. It's about your OC. Okay. So, where did you get the idea for that? I love that star-dotted um, skin tone or uh, pattern, you, you want to call it that. Where did you get the idea for it? Uh, it's, um, it's actually just from my last name. Um, you know, I, I took my last name and, um, I was like, okay, so what would Starborn look like if she were a pony? Um, and then I, I think my hair was, um, three or four colors at the time when I designed my OC. So I was like, okay, well, well, I'll just go with rainbow hair. Um, because my hair changes colors all the time. (laughs) Um, and, um. So I, I, I changed her up a little bit, and then um, once I got, like, the color right, I was like, okay, well, you know, Starborn, she should be starry. Um, so I added, like, little yellow bits here and there, um, and then I gave her, like, the body freckles, um, 
you know, just to look, I wanted it to look like um, the night sky, basically. Yeah, actually, I thought it was a, more of a polka dot touch. Kind of. I, I really, it's just supposed to look like a starry sky. Okay, so now about that cutie mark, what does it represent? I don't actually know that one. Um, I, I wrote a really bad fan fiction about my OC uh, that's never been posted anywhere and probably never will be because it's just that bad. Yeah, I, I just, like, I don't I don't really know what my own special talent is. Um, I, you guys have seen or heard that I do modeling, I do painting, I do music, um, and I don't think that I am particularly good at any one of these things. So, um, in a sense, it's kind of like having cutie pox. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say uh, something like that. Yeah, so, I, I mean... Um, it, it just kind of worked out that that's that's the cutie mark I made originally because I thought I needed one, and I, I did consider leaving her a blank flank for a little while. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's another thing that's just kind of based on my last name, um, just keeping with the star theme. Um, but, but overall, um, it, it just represents being who you want to be, you know, and that old uh, generic quote that's like, you know, shoot for the stars, and I feel, I feel like in my life I did that. <laughs> I've, I've completely accomplished... charged with inspiration, aren't you? Uh, generally, I mean, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. So, just before we end this, do you have any questions for us? What made you guys want to start the show? Well, um, for me personally, um, I wanted to promote the local talents over here because. We do have wonderful talents here, but they don't have a platform to speak out. So I thought that I might as well do a show that promotes them. And, well, what do you know? Um, it went well. Awesome. Um, I don't feel like that's enough, but I can't think <laughs> of anything right off my head. Yeah, well, let me see if I can add more to the reasons why I started the show. Um, let's see. Wanted to promote local talent. Done. Um, and just wanted to have fun and talk ponies all week. And Norman also, he said he wanted to do a podcast for a very long time as well. So you okay. found a perfect opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you guys have a great show, so... Um, oh, hopefully, thank you. Hopefully it only grows in popularity. Yeah, thanks. I, I, personally, I, I find it absolutely insane that I'm being interviewed by two people who two episodes ago were talking to Michelle Kreber. <laughs> so wait, uh, by the way, plug, uh, Apple Bloom is Best Crusader. Woohoo, that's awesome. Wait, um, yep. is this your first interview? Uh, so this is actually my third. Oh, um, okay. Well, I, I um, was interviewed on the spot at, at um, Canterlot Gardens by... Um, uh, like uh, people who didn't know who I was, like they didn't know about the Great to Be Different song or anything. Um, I believe it was um, Anime on Location. They saw me giving out the derpy letters and, and they just stopped me to kind of ask me about them and why I was doing it and all that kind of fun stuff. Oh, all right. Um, which I actually, I, I, they posted a lot of their Candlelight Gardens interviews, but I haven't seen mine show up on their channel. Yet. Yet. Yeah. Yet. Yet. <laughs> Uh, and then I was on the um, the Philadelphia radio um, Canterlot Gardens like wrap up. Was that because of the car? <laughs> oh no, no. Um, actually, that was um, uh, mostly just because I spent so much time with them at Canterlot Gardens um, and with Forest Rain and Cyril the Wolf and um, Hey Last Fast and a lot of the other musicians. Um, and then also uh, at the time of the their broadcast be at Forest Rain's house in Canada. <laughs> oh. Oh, cool. Wait, so uh, Canterlot Garden is near... Oh, right, cool. Yeah, yeah. it's near Canada. Uh, actually, Canterlot Gardens is... It was about nine hours away for Forest. Um, it was in um, Ohio. So did you drive to visit Forest Rain? Yes, I did. How long was the drive? Uh, also about ten hours, I would say. Oh, okay, because... Norman and I are three hours. I don't even do the drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when he completed it to final draft from EFR, he said it was nothing. Because <laughs> <laughs> the last time I went, I took the train down. Uh, bad, bad idea, because the train took you six hours to get yeah, here. Yeah, the train took six. Oh. But I could lie flat. 
So now, before we wrap up, any shout-outs, Norman? Well, I have two. I want to give a shout-out to Norman D. Jaden for the fun banter that we had on Twitter, and to Book Pony from Elegant Radio. We had fun talking online. Okay, so how about you, um, Rebecca? Any shout-outs to make? Um, absolutely one to Forest Rain, because he's awesome and amazing and all that jazz. I, I want to give one to the DC Bronies, all 400 and whatever of you there are now. Whoa. <laughs> Biggest shout-out <laughs> yet. Yay. <laughs> and, and one to absolutely every Brony in the fandom. Uh, you're all amazing, and I love you all. Woohoo. Daniel, what about you? Yep, and my shout-out, yes, I wrote it down this time. <laughs> awesome. All right, it's to Ellen Lau. Now, I did not know that you waited two hours in the car park for me. Basically, uh, this guy, he saw this Pinkie Pie hanging, my trademark Pinkie Pie on my rearview mirror, and I was parked next to his car. And what happened uh-huh. is that he apparently waited three hours for me to come out of class and get to my car so that he could just say hi to me. And, wow. Yes, Johnny. Thank you so much for that. It was a really inspiring day. It totally made my day as soon as someone... I mean, you knocked on, you knocked on your window and tried to get my attention. I thought I left something on top of my car. And it was raining. And I mean, in the rain, you were waiting for me. I was like... It was really touching. So thank you so much for that. I'm awesome. sorry I couldn't stay for like a chat or for tea or anything. But yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> so now, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com you can fill up our little email inbox there is some stuff inside it I wouldn't say it's empty aside from all the Twitter notifications that Norm has been getting indeed <laughs> okay and you can also reach us on Twitter our Twitter account is at the MBS show mine is at St. Pinky S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E I'm at Norman Sanzo uh, uh, I'm at R Starborn R-S-T-A-R-B-O-R-N-E Mm-hmm. And also, subscribe to us on iTunes, leave us a nice five-star rating, and like our Facebook page as well. Yes, definitely do it. Mm-hmm. And that's it for this week, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Daniel Anthony. I've been Norman Sanzo. And I'm Rebecca Starborn. And we'll see you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. It was a dark day when I lost my faith. I wasn't the pony I thought I'd be. And it seemed that no one could relate There was nothing left for me to see So I took a walk to the edge of the town The thought of leaving it all behind When I saw her way and then simply fly away so I opened the letter and looked inside and what was written made my day it said isn't it great to be divine Yeah.
These last few years flew by just like a blur. I'm now exactly where I should be. And I know I owe it all to her. That beautiful mare who believed in me. Yeah, I do know the base price, but I don't remember the shipping price. Give me a second. Oh, you really put me on the spot, didn't you? Good thing I'm editing. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. <laughs> yeah, that was last week's motto, not this week. I thought it's every week's motto. <laughs> Shush, nobody needs to know. <laughs> oh. You know, filling up dead air is fun when you're not when you don't have any idea what you're gonna do. Uh, That's okay. Hold on a sec, guys. Okay, what happened this time? All right. So what happened? No, my dad came and asked me something. It's okay now. All right. <laughs> so um, pull me back in so I can put in the shipping and handling. All right.